All right, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about points, pointless, electronic ignition, which is different. Latest information on distributors, and I'm actually going to show you how to do, how to remove the distributor easily. About the history of them as well. Caps, rotors, all that. All right, so let's get started. First of all, I'm going to tell you this distributor is dropped wrong. It usually doesn't have the clips this direction. Usually they're on either side here and here and the condensers in the back so come i know that i didn't drop it i don't know who did i don't know but anyway remove the clips yeah pull the rotor off i usually do that in the car and then i do not take this loose i leave that alone i do this right here is i'll take my ratchet or wrench and i'll take the bolt that holds that bracket out. So I've always done points. So I removed the distributor to do them, doing them in the car. It really is a waste of time. You'll find in two seconds you can have your distributor out. And uh, there it goes, right there. So there's the distributors out. They drop right back in. Those of you guys who don't know, they have a I'll show you. They have an offset here so that when you drop it in, you can only drop it in one direction. So that makes it much easier to get your points out. I take it and put it in the vise and do the points in the vise. I've done that for my whole life. Now, if you notice in here, this condenser is silver. So whenever it's a 009 distributor, I usually will update it to pointless and I I was going to show you one of my one of the one of the condensers cuz the new ones are kind of a gold color they have like a little like a gold type of thing and what we used to look at years ago was whenever a car had one of those gold condensers in it it was going to fail very quickly and Bosch now I don't know where they get their condensers at, but they're getting these condensers that have that gold anodate, you know, whatever anti-rust stuff on them. And it, they do not last at all, not at all. I saw a guy <laughs> with one of those had 80 miles on it. He just put it in 80 miles, and the condenser was already toast. So I've had people tell me, hey, man, I, I use the points, you know, I just carry an extra set. Uh, I'm getting a lot more than 80 miles out of these pointless things. And I'll tell you what I do. And then we're going to talk about new options as well with uh, high energy ignition they have coming out. Uh, that You know, it just beats the stuff all over the place. And there's ones options that are not very expensive. But I have tons of original Bosch unlike these uh, this China garbage I don't run these caps and rotors and stuff like that I still have tons of those and these I don't know I don't know if these are that great but they're made in Germany they have this option we're gonna talk about the price of all this stuff in a second too so these Pointless. This is an this is an MP pointless. And I'm gonna have people who are gonna tell me, oh no, I use the Petronics, I use the uh, what's the other one? Compufier. You know, those suckers are about a hundred bucks. And if you're gonna go that direction, I'm gonna give you another option later in the video. That is actually quite a bit better. But these MP pointless, now they have some I've seen on eBay that look exactly like these. I'm afraid to try them. If you guys have tried them, put some comments below. Love to hear about it, but I don't know. You know, the ones they have on there, they look just like these. Um, and I don't know. I don't know if they're any good or not. I have no idea. But the Ampy ones I've been getting have not been too bad. Their most recent version of it that looks like this one. I'll get it out in a second here. So they look like this. Um, the latest version and there's one that looks exactly like this on eBay. I Don't know. I haven't tried it. 
like I said, you know, they're cheaper even. And they look like the same exact thing. I don't know. And they say Ampi replacement. So, but it doesn't say Ampi. So, I don't know. You know, it doesn't come in the same package. So, uh, yeah, maybe China copy. I don't know. These I've had pretty good luck with. Uh, we were running, my friend had a shop, he was using these, and we were having about the same amount of comebacks with these, or problems with them, um, than we were at Petronics and, and CopyFire. Almost all of them will have an issue. And when it goes out, it just shuts off. You just have no ignition at all. So, what I do when I use these, and the reason I use the empty ones, is because I buy two of them. I keep one in the glove box at all times. So, yeah, so these are about half, a little less than half the price of CopyFire or um, what's the other brand? Whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Petronics. Okay, they're about half the price. So you can buy two, less than half the price. If you buy, if they haven't, if you buy them at CarCraft, they're really inexpensive. Um, and get two of them, have one in your glove box and have one in the car. They only take a couple of minutes to change. It really doesn't take long at all to do. So I'm going to go ahead and do this distributor real quick. Now, the downside to these is they don't work on 6 volt. So you got to, at 6 volt, you pretty have no other option. On some of the other distributors, you're probably going to have to run points and just take your chances. And same thing, just buy two sets. Put one in the glove box, one on the car, and pray a little. Then you have pretty much, because you can't just buy these at the parts store or whatever. So then you have pretty much a pretty reliable situation. Not bad. Uh, there's still, again, I've driven, you know, I drove, uh, let's see, almost a thousand miles on mine. I didn't have any issues. I had my extra one with me. I have one extra and I carry it with my little tool set and I just move it throughout all the cars because they all have the same ignition system. And that's the way that I do it. So you want to do it my way, that's great too. Now, why don't I take this bracket off? The reason I don't take this bracket off, when I put the distributor back in, the timing is going to be very, very close. Then I set my point gap, if I'm using points, and I put it in and I check it with a dwell meter. So the reason you use the dwell meter versus using the gap all the time is because you're going to get a more accurate reading. I set my dwell at 45. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll check the dwell at 40 to make sure it's at 45. I mean, the reason you use dwell meter is because let's say you're using an older set of points or you're checking your points. I just throw this on there real quick and make sure that my points aren't closing. Really good idea to have a dwell meter if you have points, because what you're going to do is you're always going to check those points and you want to make sure that they that your rub block right here, let's get you up close, that your rub block, you know, these new points, the new points are garbage. Again, I'm telling you, they're really bad. The rub blocks are made out of plastic when the old ones were Bakelite. And the Bakelite uh, ones wear down, the, these not wear down as quick. You also have to have lube on here. You have to put some grease on here. You can use grease, but this is the real product, Lubricam. <laughs> you got to be an old school guy to have a tube of that. And lube that cam, and it shouldn't have any burrs. You got to check it, even sand them sometimes when they're old. They've been sitting a long time. I'll sand them with like 600 grit and polish it, run it in the drill, and just polish that sucker out really nice. Otherwise, it'll wear that rub block down and your points will go shut. And so the easy way to check that is to throw your dwell meter on. You hook up one to the positive side of the coil. And obviously, the, the red one goes to the positive side. The black one goes to the negative side of the coil. And you'll check your dwell real quick and see if it's at 45. If it's going to like 55 or something like that, you know your points are getting shut. So... Those are things you need. You really should have if you have a if you if you want to eliminate that, just go pointless. Okay, <laughs> then you eliminate a lot of this stuff. But if you really want to do it right and you want to stay with original and you have a, maybe you have a six volt car, then you know you should have a dwell meter. You can pretty much only find them used, I think, on eBay. Now, there's another problem with 
these 009 distributors is the cost of caps and rotors. If you haven't noticed, the Bosch, that's why I got these here brand. Uh, I don't know how good they are, but Auto House Arizona has them. And I think they sell, get them through IMC, so a lot of places that carry IMC products will have them. I mean, the average price on the rotor alone, and this is not a Bosch. It should be, but it's not. Um, the average price of a rotor, I've set, found is about $25 for one rotor. And this is an old Bosch cap. It's still in good shape. I have a lot of these still. So that's one of the reasons I'm running 009s and not going to the newer system, which I'm going to show you a little later here. So, like, an MP makes a 009 copy, it's decent, it works okay, but it does have a cheap rotor and cap. usually take those off and use my other ones if I have them. Now, if you're buying something new, I'm going to tell you a little bit later about that, but I'm still going to tell you a couple more things about Pointless first that are do not do. What not to do. There are distributors that come in a white box. Okay, and they're not empty ones. They don't have this module in them. They have some other thing. I, I don't know. And there's also companies that sell these cheap $15 or $20 ignition modules that come in a white box. And they sell them at a lot of the parts stores. Those suckers are so unreliable. Do not run one of those. You will just be wasting your time. You'll be changing it all the time, and it might not even work when you first put it on. We call those the white box uh, pointless. Don't buy the white box pointless. They're junk. I saw a guy who had just had a distributor put in, and I was trying to tell him, dude, that was a white box distributor. And he's like, no, no, the shop wouldn't do that to me that did. I said, they did. <laughs> That's a white box distributor. And it had the crappy junk inside of it. And he made it from uh, San Jose down to, I'm trying to think, past King City. And then it died. You know, that's about it. So if you want those kind of problems, just buy the cheap stuff, the junk. The MP is not bad. I'm telling you, I haven't had too many problems with them. I'm not going to say they're perfect. But like I said, it's a great option to buy two and have one in the glove box and then have two of them you're gonna it's gonna go out at some point but at least you'll have the second one there with you and they come with the nice little wrench to put it in personally i have yet to have to change one that was bad i did have one that gave me some problems but i was also having a bad connection at my wire so i think it was with, it really was that in the camper van i was having a problem with the wire if you watch my video when i took it up just to uh Solvang, uh, this wire got a bad connection on the coil on my MP pointless, and it, it was giving me problems before, and then the new one was working great, and then I found out that it was actually just that wire was, I, it looked perfect, but it was getting a bad connection at the coil. So that may have been the issue that I had with the pointless that I got MP anyway. That's, that's the only problem I've had with it personally. But we did see some of them come back in the shop, that you know it, they go bad they all do okay so that covers most of that um if you go points dwell meters and must make sure you got all that stuff right by the time you go and buy all that stuff you're going to be into what i'm going to show you right now from cb performance all right so if you need a cap rotor wires and all that um and you need two ignition modules like the ones I'm showing you and empty ones you're pretty much and you're gonna buy all Bosch stuff you're pretty much almost at the point where you could just buy one of these and this is a whole setup they have they have these and they come with a wire set and I forget what it was it was a little over two hundred dollars now it's like 230 there's a lot of inflation but um yeah they have these they have the Magnus they have the I think this is the one I was looking for. It's their Magnus Spark. Comes with the wire set. Comes with the coil. Comes with the distributor. 
and now you're into the new fuels and all that stuff you're going to burn cleaner and people say that they actually get better performance right when they put it in so one of the things you need to know if you're going to do this if you're going to go this is a high energy ignition type system where you have a much higher voltage uh, your spark goes further it's like the newer cars i mean the newest cars all have uh, they don't have spark plug wires anymore. Now they all have, you know, coil packs. So, uh, and even that's even more efficient than this is, but this is like, say late seventies, early eighties technology, <laughs> which is a whole lot better than the sixties and fifties that Volkswagen's had. So you can upgrade to one of these. Okay. And basically you've got uh you know a hotter spark now when you do this if you decide to go this direction this is only 200 bucks right now okay for the whole kit i've talked to him on the phone it's 200 dollars for that um and when you upgrade to this whole system what you can do what you need to do and you take your spark plugs out and you should either buy ones that are gapped larger or regap the ones you have now this is a key thing everybody does wrong they gap their spark plugs wrong typically if i open the box and the spark plug is not gapped to the gap that i want i buy a different spark plug that's already gapped to that gap so what i've seen a lot of people do and when they do a tune-up is they put a feeler gauge in there and they check the gap on the spark plugs and if you can see that needs to be perfectly square so where the electrode and the little contact here is if it's a little bit off of square it will not fire correctly so a lot of times people go and regap their spark plugs and they actually ruin them so what i'll do is i usually will just look at them and make sure they look all the same and that's how i've been doing it for years and i look at them very carefully make sure those gaps don't look like they've been pounded down this one might have been my eyes aren't as good as they used to be so i will check that one with a gap with us you know with a spark plug you know with a gap you know measure that and make sure that it's perfectly square i can see it looks like it's down just a little bit so it might have fell this thing looks a little damaged. Those things I look at always when I do spark plugs and I replace them is I look at make sure that thing's square. So if you regap your spark plugs and you make it to 40 thousandths, which that's what you need to do. If you go electronic ignition, you need to go to a 40 thousandths gap, okay? And that's the, that's the average. There used to be back in the 80s cars that were 60 thousandths, and that is just too wide of a gap. We used to have those cars, and they would recommend 60 thousandths gap on the on the spark plugs and those suckers would always have a misfire so we started putting 40s in those and we had no issues after that back then we had to use champion plugs which are completely garbage i would never use champion plugs that was our thing my tune-up guy loved them because he'd have to do them two or three times and he'd get paid each time so whatever you know i wasn't into that i like to make stuff go away and never come back um so what what he what we do is they had you know uh i can't remember the names yc6 and yc4s they were at the end there was a, a whole bunch of letters and numbers before that and the yc6s we would not put in we put in the fours and everything because we found that the 60 thousands gap was always a always an issue so we'd want to make sure that the plug already was gapped to the uh, amount and not regap the plugs because we weren't that good at, at making sure they were perfectly square as they were in the factory so if you still have you know stock heads um i don't know the part spark plug numbers these are things you're going to need to look up and find out if they make these plugs in a wider gap so 
that's what I don't know. I don't know that off the bat because I don't have that ignition system yet. And that's what what my plans are is eventually I'm going to go to those ignition systems. So let's talk about installing it and a little bit of the problems you might have. Now, I was on the phone with CB Performance and asked them about this. So they said it depends on the the fuel pump that you have as to whether it's they said usually it will fit on all of them but sometimes it conflicts with the lines so you, you might have an issue where you have to clock the distributor you know pull out your drive and set it in a different position and uh, what you'd want to do to do that is set it at top dead center number one first and then remove the drive be very careful there's the washer on the end down there they could fall into the oil so yeah there's that so you have to pull out the drive okay and reclock it and set it somewhere in a different position and so that you can get the distributor in uh, the right way for your engine and they are supposed to fit on even on a regular carbureted engine now the other issue you're going to have is a lot of things that I do on these to work on the carburetor and whatnot, I pull the distributor cap off and just set it to the side like this so that I can reach things like the back carburetor bolt. So much easier if you take the distributor cap off of these style. On those, you're probably going to have to take the distributor cap, but it's going to be a little more work to get it off to get behind there. It's going to be a little bit tighter to work on things. So that's the issues you have. Now the benefits are... The electronic ignition, not like the pointless, has a much hotter spark. And if you have the electronic ignition, you're going to run a lot cleaner, more efficient, probably get a little bit better gas mileage and have a little more power. Now, that would make a big difference on a performance engine. One of the things I forgot to mention on the pointless, if you're going pointless, you got to have a Bosch coil too. And if you have the one that isn't Bosch, that's where maybe you, if you had issues and you used a pointless and you didn't have a Bosch coil, that might be the reason that you were having problems. So you have to have the Bosch coil with the resistor in it and everything for that to work out right. Just so you know. So that's another requirement for the pointless. Well, anyway, I hope this helps out with your myths and mysteries on points pointless the history we never needed to use anything other than these back in the old days but now the stuff is not the same so just remember that it's not the same stuff you know Bosch stuff has gotten just insanely expensive um, so there's other options out there that are actually really good like that MagnaSpark setup is just that's a really cool new newer idea it's been around a while but um i didn't i wasn't aware that they were that inexpensive and now with the price of all this stuff going up and the price of the distributor caps and all that stuff and the rotors going up so much i mean 25 dollars for a bosch rotor i don't know what a distributor cap but you had to buy a rotor cap and two pointlesses you know you're like at like what probably 150 bucks you know it's like well it, the other thing that i would do is if i was going with the electronic ignition is buy a second module a module uh, the, okay there's three parts inside the, the distributor there's the pickup coil that looks like this there's a module that goes on the outside of it and there's a coil okay sometimes the pickup coil and the module are integral they're both the same in the same part. In this case, with the pointless, the pickup coil and the module are all together in one. So I would buy a second pickup coil. If you're going to buy the CB Performance one, I would, at the same time, they order, they were like 35 bucks or something like that. I would buy a second one of those and do the same thing. Keep it in your glove box because if that sucker goes out on you on the road, you're not buying one anywhere. You're going to mail order it from them. It's going to be waiting. So have that second part in your glove box when you're driving with that one. 
Anyway, I uh, hope that helps you. I'll talk to you in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe.